This is She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. Your host, Kinsey Roberts, interviews incredible women in the wedding industry who are making their mark and creating success on their terms. Join the conversation. Hey there, welcome to episode 174 of She Creates Business, a podcast for wedding pros. This is your host, Kinsey Roberts. I hope you're having a great day today as you listen to this. Maybe you're driving in the car, maybe you're working out, maybe you are headed to an elopement or a wedding. Whatever you're doing, today's topic is cleaning up and organizing your digital life. And I think with school starting in whatever form it's starting for you this year and uh, just getting into the swing of fall, it's there's no better time to talk about cleaning up our digital life. I think if you have been wanting to take some step-by-step actions to make sure your digital digital life is organized, clean some things out, get rid of subscriptions you don't need, and just feel a lot better about what's happening, what's automated. Today's episode is going to be really fun for you. Before I get to my guest, Janae Kirshner's bio, I want to thank August's sponsor, Sourced Co., stock photography and video clips for wedding professionals. Sourced Co. has been such an incredible supporter of the podcast, even before they decided to officially come on as sponsors. And I just want to say, you guys, to have a sponsor on the show, to have them support you as women entrepreneurs in the industry, to support me on the show. And this content is a really humbling experience and I appreciate them so much. I have used them for She Creates Business. I've used them for Vista View events. I am using them for the new business that is a sister brand to Vista View events that I will be launching soon and telling you more about. And it has been a godsend. I love their work. I love the video clips. I love the photos they use. Um, you can get 15% off your purchase and a you can get 15% off every single month for three months of your subscription with them by using the code she creates biz B-I-Z. She creates biz all caps over at sourcedco.com. If you need new photos, if you need new video footage, if you need a professional looking um, Instagram feed, if you want consistency in your branding, Source Co. is who I recommend. Love those ladies, love what they're doing over there, and I would love for you to support them. Use the code SheCreatesBiz, SourceCo.com. Janae Kirshner, my guest today, talking about sharing with us how to clean up our digital life started her photography education series, Tea with Janae, to share advice, resources, and lessons learned over the last 10 years as a wedding photographer. Tea with Janae now includes an Instagram TV series, a blog, weekly podcast, in-person meetups, one-on-one coaching, online courses, and marketing intensive workshop for wedding photographers. You can visit her at teawithjanae.com. She's been featured in several wedding publications over the last 10 years, including, but not limited to, Martha Stewart, Style Me Pretty, Brides, and The Knot. And she was handpicked as the New York City's best, one of New York City's best wedding photographers to know by Brides and voted Best in Brooklyn Wedding Photographer in 2008. Isn't that wonderful? Congratulations on those awards, Janae. Well-deserved. Let's get into the interview with Janae Kirshner talking all about how we can clean up our digital life. I love these types of episodes. Let's do it. Janae, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Uh, It's absolutely my pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on. We're talking today, you guys, about cleaning up your digital life. I love this topic. I thought that was such a catchy title. And when Janae pitched it, I was like, oh, 1000%. Yes. And I think I even said on Instagram, I was like, I feel like that's so catchy. Uh, And everyone needs to do it. We all need to clean up our digital life at one point or another. So I'm really looking forward to talking about this because you, you mentioned to me, you recently did this. And I'm sure you do it, you know, more than you've done it more than once, but you recently did it. And it's something that you found to be really helpful sort of in this downtime, not not necessarily downtime, but in in some of the downtime we have due to coronavirus uh, as we record not having as many weddings. But also, you know, it's something that people could do in their off season. Yeah, totally. I found it. Well, I found myself with a lot more free time. And I, I think it's those things where you keep putting them off. I kept getting yeah. these stings or notices or notifications or 
bill, bills, you know, random bills. And I, I always push them away. Like I'll get to it later, but I actually had the time to sit down and go through everything. And it was so, it was very cathartic. It was like, okay, this is finally at a place now where I can manage it. And I know what's coming and I know what I'm paying for. And, um, it won't bring me any stress. It was, it was very much a, like a stress reliever because there's so much stress going on in the world. So I just wanted my phone and my computer and my billing to be stress free, if that makes sense. It makes total sense. And did it give you kind of like a sense of control too? Like I know exactly what's happening when it's happening. Yeah, that's really funny and smart that you mentioned that because I feel like there's a lot of things happening out of my control. And I, I tend to clean my closet when I'm really like, <laughs> when things are just spinning, you know, like all the plates are spinning and I can't focus on anything. I will literally rip out my closet and like redo it. And I'm like, okay, I feel, I feel whole again. Very, uh, Enneagram eight. This is totally me. Um, and then I felt the same way with my digital life. It was like the one thing I had been neglecting for a while. And, um, yeah, I just cleaned it up and I felt and feel so much better. Mm. Okay, I'm excited to get into the steps. Like, I feel like you probably have some step by step stuff to take us through. Like, let's start here, then we're going to move here, right? Is that kind of how? Yeah, cool. definitely. For okay. sure. Before we get there, though, I want I want you to introduce yourself to everybody and just quickly, you know, at the top of the show, as I always do, I read your professional bio there. So they know a little bit about you, Janae, but I would love for you to take a few minutes and just tell us who you are, what you do in the industry, um, so we can get to know you a bit better. Yeah, thank you so much. So my name is Janae Kirshner, and I am a wedding photographer based in New York City. Um, My home is Brooklyn. I've been a wedding professional for over 10 years, and I've recently, um, within the last two years, become an educator. Um, I have my own educational series and podcast called Tea with Janae, and that's where we give tangible advice, real tips, and I share what I've learned over the years with my audience and my listeners and take questions from everyone and sort of answer Here and you know we have a Facebook group and all that stuff like that. So a really one-on-one level, and I do coaching. Um, and the podcast, uh, which you've been on, which I'm so excited to be on yours, uh, has been an incredible tool to to teach. And I'm sh- you know I'm sure that you find that as well. It's just people listen to the show and then they'll DM me or write me and say, Oh my God, you answered this question. That guest you had on was so helpful and my business is going X, Y, and Z better. And I'm like, Oh, it's so amazing. So yeah. So my whole mission now is really just to help empower um, wedding photographers and not get taken advantage of. That's why I started this whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. You have a wonderful podcast and I so appreciate the opportunity to be a guest on this show as well. Did you ever think when you first started your career as a photographer, did you ever, ever, ever think or think that you would be mentoring and educating other photographers in the industry? No, not at all. I was really um, shy about it. And uh, I wasn't confident in myself as um, in the beginning that I could, that I could share my voice, that I could share what I've learned because you know, looking outward, it's like, I'm not a name. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't have that draw. I know Um, what you mean. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Same. So I thought, so I thought to myself, you know, nobody's sponsoring me. Who's going to want to learn from me? Um, and then I read a couple books that really changed my mindset and changed my perspective. And I just dove right in and the response was immediate. And I was like, Oh, okay. I've been silly this whole time. (laughs) So, so then I just changed and, and now I'm full force and I've been asked to speak at conferences and other podcasts and uh, workshops. So yeah, I think you just have to, sometimes you just have to find the confidence in yourself. And even if it's someone giving you the permission to believe in yourself, that's all you need to, to get going. And that, and that's exactly what I needed. Yeah, it's so true. You sometimes need that external validation, just to understand that you're on the right path. And it's not something that it's not something that you were just thinking internally, like, Oh, this seems like a fun idea. You know, you just need those few first people just to say we believe in you and thank you for doing what you're doing to keep going. Yeah, I mean, mentors are so important. And I've had a lot of mentors that have helped me and my business along the way and pushed me into uh, bigger brackets and bigger markets and bigger circles. And if I didn't have them, I wouldn't be where I am today. So it's really important to have, you know, people in your corner um, rooting for you. And and that's what I do with my mentees, you know, help them out and push them and, and get them out of their comfort zone, which is what I need too. Me too. Yeah, likewise. Absolutely. Well, 
I have a feeling, uh, you know, you've been in the industry for over 10 years, you are a mentor and a coach. And I have a feeling that you didn't just pick your digital life to sort of clean up and clean out on accident. It wasn't like, well, I'm an eight on the Enneagram. And this seems like as good a spot of any to start. (laughs) But I imagine that you you chose your digital life uh, on purpose and for a reason, because you know how impactful it is to your business and to your administ the administrative side and the emotional side. So kind of walk me through why why you decided to, you know, kind of take the bull by the horns, as they say, and and clean up your the digital aspect of your business? Yeah, that's a great question. I think for me, I felt like I, I've worked a lot on my own processes mm-hmm. as, as a business owner and, you know, getting everything on a CRM, a client management software. I love 17 hats. And just cleaning up the the process is making it streamlined. So therefore my client can have a really streamlined experience and I'm on top of it. But I felt with my digital life, um, I was kind of losing the battle with just being um, reminded or dinged or things not working correctly or basically just taking up too much time. So I figured I'm, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to streamline this and I'm going to work it out so that it brings me as much peace and joy as like my CRM does. So I just really took it by the, the bull by the horns and just really sat down and, and worked through it. Mm-hmm. So let's, I want you to walk us through this. I feel like this is going to be such a helpful, like action packed episode. Where did you even start? What did, what was the first thing you did? So the first thing I did, I wanted to know what I was actually doing with my expenses Mm -hmm. and I wanted to know where I was spending my money and on what I know that like subscriptions and, um, apps and all these things, they, you just sign up for them on your phone. You're like, yeah, okay, that's fine. Yes. And then then all of a sudden (laughs) you're like spending a hundred to $200 on stuff that maybe you don't need, you know? And I have Canva and then I had over and then I had, um, on full, like I had all of these different things where, when I started to look at one um, application, I realized it does everything. So I could get rid of the unnecessary ones. So the first thing I did was go through my finances and I cleaned up my digital life with my accounting. So I joined QuickBooks and I'm, uh, you know, I've been in business a long time, but I did everything via Excel and I was like very proud of that. But then my, you know, accountant and the years going by with all the different rev- the different ways that I make revenue um, were creating a lot of friction with my accountant. So I said, okay, I'm going to figure out QuickBooks and this is, this is how I'm going to clean up this first part of this. So I set that up. We had an hour one-on-one with my accountant. I would highly recommend getting someone to teach you how to use it because it is a little difficult if your brain doesn't work that way. I'm not, you know, like checks and balances. I'm like, I have no idea. But she sat with me oh, via Zoom and walked me through everything. And by the end of that call, I was like, okay, I know how to use this. And now every month I reconcile my books like a pro. (laughs) She's so happy. And I know that come next year's tax season, it's going to be a breeze. And that for me is so comforting to know that by taking that action step and sitting down and doing the hard work now, it's going to make my life so much easier throughout the year. And come tax season, it's going to be a no brainer because I'll just run a report and give it to her, which is very exciting. But then I could also visually see, because I had all of my credit cards going into one location instead of, you know, statements in each browser, I could see in one place what I was actually being charged each month. And then I could start narrowing it down from there. And you could start. So since you were seeing all of the things you were being charged each month, um, Hold on just a second. I'm going to cough. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, guys. Sorry, we're back. I had to mute myself. I was like, oh, um, and it's real life here, you guys. Um, okay, so since you could see everything in kind of in one fell swoop, I imagine then you could kind of pick out like, oh, I don't need this thing. I don't need this $12 subscription here. I don't need this $25 subscription here. And then did you start to kind of extract and cancel things that you didn't want anymore? Yeah. So I would look at, so as I mentioned earlier, so Canva, I don't know if you're familiar with Canva, but like I, I love that app. I live and die by it. Um, I went to graphic school for graphic design, but this is such an easy way to just get it done in one spot. And I realized that I could make Instagram stories. I could make sales promos. I could make launch promos and I could do everything inside this one app 
when I started really looking at what else I was paying for. And there are other digital apps like Over, which is uh, like $100 a year. And then there was Unfold, which was $40 a year. But that's $140 that I could get rid of and just spend $119 on Canva. So I was, oh, I'm saving, I'm going to save money now because I'm actually taking the time to look at the services that I had, I'm paying for and what's going to give me the most value for my dollar. And, you know, during the beginning of the pandemic, everybody was like, okay, go through your expenses and cut what you have to. And I agree with that, but I wanted to do it really smartly because I didn't want to, you know, make decisions just because I was freaking out or, you know, putting too much stress on myself. So I was being very analytical, like, okay, this is one tool. What does it do? Um, what else am I paying for that's similar and which one is the better option? So I can make a really educated decision and then I could cancel those subscriptions that I, you know, that I didn't need. Yes. Yes. I like that so much. You know, when, as you're going through this, I feel like I've done a decent job of, and I'm super big on auditing. I audit both of my businesses once a quarter, um, all, like overall picture. And we've done an episode about that, but I'm, I'm really good at keeping track of my subscriptions and kind of what I'm just paying for, for my wedding venue. But I am complete garbage at it when it comes to, <laughs> when it comes to she creates business, and the marketing part of my business and the marketing firm side, I am just like, yeah, I'm like collecting subscriptions, like it's going out of style. Right. Um, I'm just such garbage at it. And so yes, I like that you started with this because it it's such a, it's a sh- you get like that short term high, which is yes, I did an activity today. But you gain major long term benefits. Because as you mentioned, Janae, you're saving you're you're saving that money. You have you've streamlined. Now you don't have to go to three different apps to start to design. You know you only go to one. So you you've gotten that short term high of taking an action step and you know checking something off your to do list. But yeah, the long term benefits are are even better. Right. Yeah. And another example I think is um, that I can share is that I so I mentioned that I my CRM is seventeen hats, and they came out with an online scheduler. Um, I think a year ago, and I never looked into it. I said, oh, yeah, I, I use Calendly. I'm going to stick with that. And that's another provider, another paid app. And then when I was doing this process, I said, you know, let me look at the online scheduler for 17 hats. I'm already paying for it. Like, I'm not going to get rid of that. But if I figure it out and I can make it look and function the way that Calendly does, maybe I can save another $144. And that is exactly what I did. So a day I put on my calendar, I'm like, okay, let's look at this application and can I make it work for me? And then the answer was yes. You know, I, I did all the work, I put it in, I tested it out. And then once I figured it out, I was like, okay, we're, this is what I'm using going forward. And then I canceled my Calendly. And that's another $140 like over the course of a year, over five years, you know, it all adds up. So again, like just looking at what I was paying for and then what services that they provide inside of that, like what's their subset, I could make educated uh, decisions and, you know, do some testing and then, and then finally, you know, cut, cut some things that were, were, you know, trimming the fat, as they say. Yeah. Yes, I like that example. Thanks for sharing that with us. So we we've looked at the subscriptions. We got we had a quick meeting with our accountant. We learned how to use QuickBooks or whatever accounting software that you feel most comfortable with that really gives you that clear overall picture. So you're totally in control of where your money is going. What's the next thing you did to clean up your digital life? So another thing, um, I don't know if people even know this, but you can see all of your subscriptions right on your phone. Um, especially if you have an iPhone, um, I don't know about Android, but I'm sure they have something too, but I went into my subscriptions, um, in the general, um, menu and look, and you can click subscriptions and then I could also see what else I was paying for. So maybe things hadn't renewed yet, which I think it's a good thing to remember because some of them are yearly. Um, so I would go in there and I would, and I looked at what was coming up and if I still needed it. So again, like another place to look that maybe you've forgotten about and then you would get um, a notification that you signed up for another year but you didn't really want to so I, I looked at that and got rid of a couple things in there so I think that's a good tip is like don't forget to check your phone because your yearly renewal could be coming up 
Yes. I'm so glad you've mentioned that. A lot of people, nobody has mentioned that on the podcast, I don't think. And it's super true. I have to, uh, what I have to do, because I forget, uh, I, I'll, I'll get hit with like a $200 yearly renewal or something. And I'm like, oh man, <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh, and so what I have to do now, especially not so much for uh, the things that I use like on my desktop or, you know, that I have subscriptions for through um, that I like signed up for like using my desktop or what have you, but like the apps on my iPhone, um, I always forget about those. So as soon as I sign up for something, I have to put a reminder on my calendar that like lets me know a week before I get charged. Um, so that I'm like, Oh, am I using that? Should I, should I delete it or what have you? Because you are super spot on. I totally forget about those. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, a, it's really funny. It's a good tip to put it on your calendar, but not everybody's going to do that. So no. it's, it's just good to go in there and just be like, oh yeah, I did the Ghibli thing I bought. I don't need it anymore. <laughs> Let's just yep. cancel it. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, great yeah. tip. What's next? Oh yeah. So the other, so I don't know about you, but um, when your phone dings or you get a notification or a banner or a pop-up and it's like, I just wanted to stop. <laughs> you know, I feel like the the next thing I did to clean up my digital life was to go through all the apps that I use and I got rid of the ones on the phone that I haven't used in like six months. So I deleted those. And then I, the ones that I use all the time, I modified the notifications. And for me, it, it was at the point where, you know, the New York Times was coming up all day long and it was just negative, negative, negative. And I want to be positive. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to silence these because I don't want to be reminded of <laughs> like what's happening around me, uh, like all the time. Like one is fine, but not all the time. So I just went through and I modified my notifications and the dings and the whistles because it also like interrupts your uh, creativity and your um, productivity. So if you're obviously working from home and your phone is in your, you know, where you're working and it dings because you got a new email. It's like you lose focus on what you're doing and you'll look at your phone. But I've silenced that now. So it's like, I'm going to focus on the task at hand. And then when I'm done, I can look at my phone and check something else. So really being mindful of what notifications I wanted to get, what I wanted to see, what was going to affect my mood. Um, and then, and then making sure that the phone and my computer were set up accordingly. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I wish they would come out with for iPhone is a way to keep your, your calendar on your phone. So with, with like your Google calendar, your external calendar, like I wish I could have my external calendar on my phone without having to have my Gmail accounts on my phone. So I know you can toggle off the email so that it doesn't come in. But it's so easy for me and I I'm, have the worst self-control to just go back and toggle it back on so I can see what emails I've gotten. But I would totally. love it if they would do that. If you could just have your calendar, because that's what I live and die by, but not your email at all. Not even the toggle option for people who have no self-control like I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wonder if you can do it where... Um... Like, you know, what am I doing Google, wrong? <laughs> well, I think Google Calendar, they have public addresses that are, you know, with a private link. And you can put that probably in your calendars on your phone. So maybe you just are can't, you know, connect to that calendar versus the whole Gmail. Maybe you could try that. Oh, yeah. So you can just say, uh, so I'm sort of sharing it with my, my calendar, my Apple calendar. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Maybe you could just do that. I know I was in IT for a while before before becoming a wedding photographer, so that might be a good workaround. I was say, you could that's try. Very fast of you. I am writing this down right now because I'm literally I have been like lamenting this point for a couple of years now, and so um, I'm sure a lot of you are laughing right now and just saying, "Yeah, girl, why don't you just get some self control?" But I just don't have any. Um, <laughs> no, it's so, hard. It's a temptation. Like this weekend, I, I was at the, this weekend we were at the beach. And I looked at my phone and a planner that I'm working with emailed me about something that had changed. And I was like, oh, my God, I just ruined my whole day. Like, I need to just turn it off and not look at it when I'm with my family or I'm relaxing. So I, I like that you turn it off. And, it, you know, if it's there, you turn it back on. But I really, you know, I think we've just gotten to the point now where we have to make these boundaries for ourselves and just say, you know what, Sunday, Saturday and Sunday, like no email. Like, it's going to be fine, you know. <laughs> It's just like, I'll get to you on bus in my business hours. I feel like that boundary is, is coming much, much sooner than anticipated for a lot of people. 
I agree. I agree. And I think one of the blessings that has come out of this year, 2020, as we record this, is that we have understood what true emergency and like true chaos can look like in in, in many aspects. Um, and that we know that, you know, the one email about like the color of the napkins is it really can wait. You don't need right. to receive that message on your phone. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, I 100% yeah. agree. Another thing I did was, I don't know if people know this, but in your keyboard shortcuts on your phone, so my name is Janae, right? And my husband's name is Newt, N-E-W-T, Newton. Um, and every time I texted him, it would say beer. It would autocorrect, autocorrect to beer. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I'm not married to beer. <laughs> I'm married to Newt. So it, it literally drove me crazy. Every, it was every text. So what did I? So while I was doing this whole immersion process of cleaning out my digital life, I was like, I'm going to put the phrases and the people and the words that I use the most in my keyboard shortcuts yes. so it knows not to autocorrect it. And it literally took me three minutes. I've been putting it off for maybe forever. And now all of my texts don't get autocorrected. And it's like this simple little thing that brings me so much joy because I'm not frustrated anymore when I'm making a text message. So, you know, if you have a name or if it autocorrects something all the time, and like I did it for curse words too, I'm like, God, I don't mean to say ducks, you know, like, <laughs> like I need to say something else. But now it just autocorrects. And it doesn't autocorrect. It just leaves it alone. And I'm like very happy when I'm texting. So a little thing brings me a lot of joy. Well, and you are, you are so right. That is, it's a little thing, but it is so helpful. It saves so much time. And again, it's a long-term benefit. One of the things I use my keyboard for are things that I, I give to people all the time mobily. So I've, uh, I saved a phrase for multiple email addresses that I have, and I've saved a phrase for my podcast scheduler, and I've saved a phrase for my tour scheduler at my venue, because those are things that I'm giving to people constantly. Um, and it just, and I use a tool called, um, oh, what's it called, Danae? Text Expander um, oh, yeah. on my laptop and my desktop, which I love. And so I was like, I need to sort of recreate this mobile on my phone since I'm on it so much. And so uh, I took your advice and I use it with my keyboards. And honestly, like you say, it's such a little thing, but seriously, so it's so delightful. I just am like, I love that I only have to type in two, three letters and my tour calendar is like being sent to somebody. That's awesome. I love that you use Text Smart. Expander. I love that app. My friend introduced me to that a couple of years ago, and it's a game changer. It's and you can have it on your mobile, and you can have it across many different computers. And yeah, I have my signature and my online calendars there too now. And yeah, I love that. Oh, I love that you use that. I do too. Yeah, I cannot take credit for finding it. I used to work for Acuity Scheduling. Shout out Acuity. Love you still always. Uh, and I was um, introduced to it by my manager at that at Acuity. And it because we use it, they use it a lot internally, of course. Um, and so I, th I said, this is incredible. I feel like I could use this personally and professionally in my other work. Uh, and it's been you're right, it's a total game changer. So I'm really, really grateful that they that I was introduced to that. Um, it's so nice when when you know people like you are interested in streamlining and processes because I, I enjoy learning new things because I, 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 I enjoy learning about things that I can implement that save me time from people who who do it uh, really well like you do. Um, it's it's such a helpful thing. And, and like I say, I love getting that shot in the arm, like that boost that makes me feel like something has instantly been impacted. And by streamlining, you know, even just with a keyboard stroke or text expander, I think we get that instant gratification that we need, but something has actually been impacted and we have actually saved time and changed the way our businesses run when we implement these things and set them up. Yeah, I love that. And I totally agree. It's just, you know, taking a little bit time yeah. now while we have it and then, you know, streamlining the things that annoy us or that we want to clean up or that we want to make better or even saving money, you know, it's going to make you, I love that you say in, it's like instant gratification. You're like, okay, I don't have to pay for that anymore because I found this better solution or I'm already paying for it. You know, it's just, yeah. I feel like being really mindful and using the resources you already have is very beneficial. I agree. I could not agree more. Is there anything, as you were cleaning up your digital life, is there anything that you did in terms of your marketing or your social media or anything like that that you want to share a tip with? Yeah, I use um, 
I've switched over a few months prior to later, uh, which is an Instagram planning app. I was on Planoly for a long time, but I really liked um, later because they offer a couple more bells and whistles than Planoly did. And they just upgraded their, they changed their pricing structure. So now it's like, it's very comparable and they have a great feature um, called Lincoln bio. And I find, you know, I don't have 10,000 followers yet. So having that Lincoln bio or the swipe up feature is really important. But with their Lincoln bio, I found that I could link each post to a different um, external link, thus, you know, making it really easy for my, um, my audience to, to find out what I was talking about after the fact, you know, cause if I post every day, the, the new post has a different link, but if they click the link in bio, they can go to that post and what it's specifically talking about. And to me, that was, that was like everything. Cause I was like, Oh my gosh, I didn't know this existed. Um, and it's like a built in feature and I was like, Oh, this is wonderful. So for social media, I like to plan ahead. Um, and that, um, aspect of from that application was why I switched. So I was very happy, happy to find that and just having more time to figure it out. Okay, I like that. I didn't I don't think I knew that. So just to clarify, I've totally seen that as a user of Instagram. So later has the internal feature where if you click the link in bio, instead of showing you just like a list of things sort of like Linktree does, it actually shows you the feed so that you can navigate to the photo that you were looking at and click the photo and it takes you to the link that you mentioned. Exactly. In yeah. The, okay, I didn't know they had that internal feature. Yeah, no, it's really great because so it, it's actually called link in bio, like they bought that uh, URL. Right. And then they, you put your name at the end. And then when a, when someone clicks on it, they'll get like a new version of your feed. But each post is now clickable to a different link. So nice. it's incredible because let's say, you know, you're promoting this podcast. You, you know, say you put a picture of me and then you put this link and then tomorrow you post uh, maybe a class you're selling or an e-course or, you know, just saying hi to your audience and you have a different link to your website. So when they click your link in bio, there's going to be a bunch of pictures there. If they click my face, they go to my po po uh, podcast episode. If they click your face, they go to your website. And I loved having that because... I don't have the swipe up feature. You know, it's just like a nice way to give us these tools to, to help our business. Yeah. And I love, I absolutely, I really like that feature. I like Linktree too. And that's what I use right now. I use a combination of Planoly and Linktree. But, you know, what I'm hearing from you is that I can put those two tools together and get something that's actually a little better by just going to later, um, which to me, really, I really like that idea. And like I say, as a user on Instagram, I really like that feature when I can look at the photo because I know exactly what I'm looking for um, and be taken directly to the link instead of scrolling through, you know, what could become a super long link tree list. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, cool. Exactly. I really like that. I'm writing that down to to take a peek at that after this episode. What else you got for me? <laughs> this has been great. <laughs> yeah. No, another thing that I love, um, I don't know if people take advantage of this, is that I put limits on my phone, not social media limits because I always break those. Like, I, you know, I would say like, oh, just Instagram for an hour. And then it's like your limit is over. I'm like, crap, I got I to gotta <laughs> take that off. But what I did do, um, I think, again, just to like de-stress and like turn off the phone and know that I won't be bothered is that I turned on the do not disturbs. So you can actually set your phone um, to do not disturb for certain uh, certain time frame. So I have it for um, 11 p.m. it shuts off, and then 7:30 a.m. it turns back on. And if there's like a, an option, if any emergency phone numbers come in, it'll it'll ring. But you know everything else will just silence, so you don't get any dings, you don't get any notifications, no banners, no pop-ups, nothing. Um, and it really, you could even do it earlier. I mean, I should probably do it for 10 p.m. to really start winding down sooner. But I love having that option to to just silence the phone because we're all attached to our phones. Like we yes. can't lie, you know. Like it, I think there was a study that said your phone is never out of arm's length from where you are. So we know that we're like attached to it. So I like putting this new boundary on it or like restriction where it's like, okay, it's eleven o'clock. It's going to turn off, and I'm not going to look at it till till well after I wake up. So I like. Um, putting that on my phone too. Just another tool to help me, you know, de-stress and unwind and, and break that, break that habit. Mm -hmm. 
You know, if we could, you're so right that we are attached to our phones. And I am, I know you are, we all are, right? Everyone's just nodding their head right now listening to this because because it's true. But I think that I would love to see all of us and, and these tips that you're sharing about utilizing all of these tools that already exist. We're just not taking advantage of the, we're not taking advantage of them. The the cool thing that doing this does is it helps us have such a healthy relationship, uh, a more healthy relationship than we have now with things like our phone. I, I would love to see all of us, myself included, I'm raising my hand here, just have a different mindset around our phones, our notification, like what a gift and a blessing our phones have been, right? We can run our businesses from anywhere using this little device and imagine what we could do if we would, you know, utilize the tools that Janae's talking about and just have a healthier relationship with the device and just and and accept it and and love it for what it is, but not take it to, you know, to the max and, you know, be available 24 seven. And like I say, implement these things you're talking about. I think that we would find a lot more personal and professional happiness. Um, And uh, you know what I love about what you're saying, Janae, is that you are sharing things that literally right when you guys hit pause, like we can go do these things. That's what I am like. I bet I wrote this down. I like underlined it. She's sharing things that are so actionable today. We don't have to wait to do this. And I think a lot of times that is the kicker is it's like, oh, well, I have to prepare to prepare to make sure I do that later. Nope. You could get off of this episode and go implement, you know, four of the things Janae has talked about and feel instantly better about the direction your business is headed. And that's what I'm super, that's what I've been, I, like I said, I underlined this, that I feel like these things are attainable and achievable for everybody. They're not weird or complicated or, you know, we're not trying to like do brain surgery here. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, if you're listening right now, um, you can go to your subscriptions and see what you don't need. You can change your notifications immediately and remove apps that you no longer use and just clog up your phone. You can set your do not disturb uh, right now. And then you've got half the episode already done, you know, like, yeah, you can do it right now and know, oh yeah, I've changed it. I've saved some money and and now it won't bother me as much. Yes. You can add some of those keyboard or the, you can do some keyword strokes and create your own custom keyboards to fill in stuff. Yeah. I mean, just think about how many times you're like, oh, can you send me your prices or, you know, are you available this day? And you just write XO and it just says, here's my scheduler or here, here's my availability. And like, you're done. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's so powerful. That's really powerful. Super powerful. Well, as we, this has been so wonderful, Janae. I cannot thank you enough for giving us all of these insider tips and tricks. As we wrap up here, is there any other little insider advice or like cleaning up your digital life tip you can offer us before we head out? Um, I think you know the the main thing is to to ask yourself what makes you happy and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. And the whole reason I started this is because my digital life was driving me bonkers (laughs) and I wanted it to be less stressful. I wanted to be a place where I could take control, um, especially in a time in the world when I couldn't take control of a lot of things, but I could clean up my closet and I could clean up this. And uh, it's brought me a lot of peace. And I feel like if you ask yourself, um, what When my phone buzzes, does it annoy me or does it make me happy? And and where can I alleviate the stress? Um, Just, you know, just in something that you use every day, I think you'll be a lot more uh, peaceful um, at the end of it. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think I think there's a lot of us that are just, uh, like I said, nodding our heads along with you because we could all use a little bit more peace. And, and here's the great news. You are in full control of everything Janae suggested today, which I think is, as she said, extremely powerful. Janae Kushner, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate your time. Where can everybody find you and connect with you? Thank you so much for having me. It's been amazing. Uh, you guys can reach me uh, at JanaeKirshner.com. Um, that's my wedding uh, photography site. Or you can come over uh, to the education site, which is TWithJanae.com. Um, I'm on Instagram at, at Janae Kirshner. Same with Facebook. I think that's Janae Kirshner Photography. But if you want to say hi immediately after the show, Instagram is the best way to reach me. And I'm always in my DMs. So I hope to hear from you guys. Yeah. And lucky for you guys, as always, I will put all of these goodies and these links in the show notes so you can easily connect with Janae. But if you have any problems whatsoever, come on over to Instagram to find either one of us. We'll help you point you in the right direction. We'd love to say, hey, Janae, thank you again. I really appreciate you. Hopefully we can have you back on.
We love that. Thank you so much for listening to She Creates Business. Please take a minute and head to iTunes to leave an honest review so we can help more wedding pros find the show.